Hey everybody, thank you for stopping by my channel, A Square Pillow Isn't Square, the place where you will learn anything and everything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. Today's video is a follow-up on one that I made about how to actually make or fabricate a Roman shade. Today we're just going to talk about how to measure for your Roman shade, how to know exactly how wide and how long to make it, and also the different ways that you can install it. So. Stay tuned, we are going to talk about measuring and installation of a Roman shade today. I do not have an appropriate window in my entire house where I could show you an inside mount uh, measure and installation, so I'm going to use this doorway. Um, just pretend it's a window because the principles are the same. But, so we're going to pretend this is our window and we're going to start by measuring for an inside mount shade. What makes it an inside mount shade is that you're going to have your, your trim um, around the outside of the window and then it's going to recess inside and right here is where you're going to mount a shade if it's an inside mount shade and the entire shade will be within the trim like this versus an outside mount shade, which the shade is mounted to the trim or above the trim and can go beyond this opening. So let's start with how to measure for an inside mount. Um, there's no perfectly straight, perfectly square window out there. So you're going to want to take measurements in two or three spots. I usually take them in three spots horizontally across the window and two spots vertically. The way I do it is I'll measure near the top, near the middle, and then at the bottom near the window sill um, for my horizontal measurements and for my vertical measurements I'll take a measurement on the left and on the right side of the window. So here's what that will look like. For your horizontal measurements, start near the top, take a nice rigid tape measure like this, put it up against one side, Put your tape measure near the front of the window, near the top, and just pull straight across and make a note of the number at the opposite end of the inside trim here. And you're going to do that in three spots, top, middle, and bottom. Make a note of that number, find the smallest of those three numbers, and take a 3 8 inch deduction. Um, that number is then going to be the finished width you want to make your Roman shade. I have found that if you take more than that, the gap on the right and the left side between the shade and the trim gets a bit, little bit big. And if you make the deduction really small or you don't take a deduction at all, the fabric on your shade can um, be too close to the window trim and it can cause abrasion. Um, and you just don't want it rubbing up and down against the, the side of the window trim. So 3 8 inch is the standard deduction for an inside mount treatment. As far as the length measurement, the way that I do that is I will start by putting my tape measure uh, down on my sill. So I've got a little stopping point and then I roll the tape up like this until you get to the top of your window. And that's the most accurate way that I've found to get your length measurement. You're going to want to do that on the right and on the left. And you're going to take the um, shortest number there, the smallest number of those two, and you're going to deduct about a quarter of an inch. Um, a quarter of an inch will give you just a little bit of space between the bottom of your shade and the windowsill. And you don't want your fabric touching the windowsill because you're going to get dirt, moisture, condensation on your windowsill and you don't want to get that on the bottom of your shade. So, horizontally, 3 eighths of an inch deduction for your finished width and vertically, a quarter inch deduction. That's how you're going to measure for your inside mount Roman shade. Now if you're going to inside mount your shade, this is the, I think, the easiest uh, installation that you can do. Here's what the back of your shade should look like. We're going to be putting screws in through the board right up into the top of your window frame. And so in order to do that, the first thing you have to do is pre-drill some holes. 
And because we're going into wood in this type of application, the location of the um, of the holes, it doesn't matter about um, you know if you're going to hit a stud or not because the whole thing is going to be wood. But you want to you do want to be careful that you're not too close to your screw eyes. On a short little shade like this, I might put one screw about here and one screw about here, and that'll give my board plenty of support. If you have a longer board, you may want to go closer to each end and then somewhere near the middle. But um, all you really have to do in in this application is we're going to um, be drilling pilot holes. So I will put a piece of wood underneath here so that I don't actually drill through and hit my floor or wherever I'm drilling. Make sure your fabric's out of the way. Lay it down on this board. And we're just going to pre-drill some holes through the bottom of the board all the way through to the top. Now pre-drilling is really important because if you just run a screw right through a little 1x2 like this, you're going to split the board and you're going to wreck your whole shade. So um, always pre-drill. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. It's as simple as this. So I'm just going to put a lot of downward pressure on there. Now see how that started getting caught? That's not uncommon when you're pre-drilling these holes on a fabric wrapped board. So to avoid that, what I'll often do is I will take a big nail or even an awl or an ice pick and I will just punch a little hole with a hammer and a nail through the fabric just to make sure that this doesn't get caught and all twisted up as I'm drilling. Alright, so here's my little punch or awl, as it's sometimes called, AWL or punch. It's got a little area meant to be hammered. And right where I'm going to make my two holes, I'm just going to punch a hole in the fabric. Make sure your strings are out of the way. And now when I go to drill, I have corrected that problem of the fabric getting caught around the, the drill bit. Once you feel it go through, you can back out. And sometimes what I'll do is, once I know it's gone through from the front, I'll go through and um, punch the little hole too and just help cut the fabric that way. But you'll drill your holes. And then I'll switch to my screwdriver end. And make sure you, you, you use long enough screws. These are actually um, deck screws, but they work, they work really well for just about everything. Um, you want to make sure that your screw is long enough to not only go through the board, but really go in and grab the wood trim on top because you're going to be pulling on the shade. If you use a, a short screw like like this, it just barely goes through the board. That's not enough insurance that it's going to keep your board mounted up into that uh, window frame. So I tend to err on the side of <laughs> too much like. Next thing I will do is I will start by pre-drilling by partially installing my screws like this. Make sure they don't stick out too far. You don't want them sticking out through the top yet. So now we just take this to the window and I'll show you how you put it up. Now take your shade and press it up inside your window header like this. And I will then often just like take that fabric, hold it from the inside and take the fabric and put it up over my head so that it's out of the way and I can see what I'm doing. And your screws are already partly started, so just use um, upward pressure on the board. Take your screw gun 
and simply drive the screw up into the header of your window like this. Now I'm not actually going to drive the screw into this door frame because it's a door frame. It's not a window and I don't want to put holes in my door frame, but it's simple as driving that screw all the way up into the frame. You'll do that on both sides. You are going to have a nice, tight, firm fitting shape and that is all there is to that installation. On an outside mount shade, I mean, you can really do it any way that you want to, but what I have found is that it's best to go trim to trim, or even better, a little bit beyond that. Maybe half an inch or so beyond the trim in both directions. One of the nice things about an outside mount shade is that you can mount it significantly above your window and create the illusion that your window is taller than it actually is. You're also going to need to mount it above the window because the type of brackets that we're going to use need some space above the window, and I'll show you those in a minute. But you will start by measuring from the top of your trim down to your sill, and you're going to, just like with the inside mount, you're going to take a quarter of an inch off of that. But then what we're going to have to do is figure out what kind of uh, mounting brackets you're going to use, and you're going to have to add that length back. Now I have to make sure I understand how big my bracket is and how thick my board is and add that amount back so that your shade, once it's mounted, won't be too short. So let's just talk about that for a second. Okay, Roman shades, custom Roman shades like this are normally attached to a wood mounting board. Now I did a video, my how to make a Roman shade video shows how to prepare the board but let's talk about the different kind of board options there are and what that means for when you're measuring for your shade, your finished shade length. Um, let's start with my preference, which is a one by two. This is a piece of, it's called white wood, um, and it is called a one by two. It's not actually one by two. It's about three quarters of an inch by one and a half. I don't know why it doesn't match the description, but this is what's called a 1x2 in a standard home improvement store lumber yard. And there's two ways that you can install a 1x2 board. One of them is what I call a flush mount. You attach your fabric to the top small side of this board and then the board is then mounted like this to the wall. There's no actual hardware. And the way that it's done is once your shade is installed and the finished edge is on the top and um, you screw it right to the wall. Um, and so just determine where you're going to want to mount that board and then make sure you add this extra distance to the length of your shade. Here I have a small outside mount Roman shade. As you can see it's going outside my trim a little bit. And when I lift this up, you can see that I have my mounting board that is a little bit above the window here. And I don't know if you can see it, but let me move that out of the way. I've simply, I've started by drilling a pilot hole through that wood. Um, makes it a lot easier to install it. You'll, you'll start by drilling your pilot holes and you can even put your screws part way in so that they're, that they're there. And then I will normally just set a level on the top of the board and get it level or you can measure up and make marks. Um, but it's important that, it's very important that your, that your shade hangs uh, horizontally level. And as you can see I have three screws on this little board. And all I did is I screwed right through the board into the solid part of the door so I didn't even need uh, any kind of wall anchors or molly bolts or anything. So that's what um, a flush mount three quarter of an inch uh, projection looks like. And the nice thing about that close mount, uh, mounting application is that when the shade is down, you have 
a very, very small pr uh, projection here and you, you don't have a lot of uh, light gap and you don't have any problems with privacy. The other way that you can mount this board is like this. When you're choosing your mounting board, you want to have as close of a projection as you can because you want your shade to lay as close as the trim, to the trim as possible. You don't want it sticking out any farther than necessary. If you need a little more clearance or you have wider trim and you want to turn your board this way, now you, that works great, but now you can't install it just by screwing it into the wall. Now you're going to need to use an L bracket. So, an L bracket just looks like this. Put your L brackets on the wall at whatever height you want, but you have to keep a couple things in mind. You've got to get the right wall bracket, the, the right L bracket for your board because you don't want this bracket sticking out forward. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a bigger, a bigger L bracket. Now you're already going to have to come above your window quite a bit just to have room for this bracket. But you can't use a bracket like that on a small board because this is going to just stick out too far. So you have to think about a couple things. One is like, you know, what type of bracket do you need and how much room do you need for it? And then you also have to add the thickness of your board. So here is a much bigger board. Let's say for whatever reason I need a pretty big projection. I'm going to need a bigger bracket like this and I'm going to have to go at least that high above my window. And I'm going to install my shade like that. So right now, let's say this is a, a two and a half inch L bracket and my board is three quarters of an inch thick. I mean, right there, I've got three and a quarter inches I have to add to the length of my shade. Now if I have this smaller one, again, if I'm going this way, it doesn't really matter. I can put it wherever I want it. But if I'm using a small board like this with a, a, a closer projection, I, can, I need to use a smaller bracket and I can actually go down lower. I mean, I can go as high as I want, but and that would look like this. So the moral of the story is here, if you're doing an outside mount shade, you have to think ahead of time. What projection board do you want? What's the appropriate L bracket size? And what is that going, how is that going to affect how high above the window you mount your shade? Um, you can, if you want to, mount to the trim like this, but I actually don't recommend it because the trim is never, it's never flat. You want a nice flat surface. This one has like a, a curve to it. It's better if you have a nice flat surface like that to put your bracket on. All right, the last installation I'm going to show you is how to outside mount your shade on a wall using L brackets. As I mentioned, I don't have a bunch of extra windows or walls or places to install shade, so I'm just going to show you. There's no window here. I'm just going to show you on this wall how to do it. Um, but again, the principle is the same. Just determine where above your window you want your L brackets to go. And um, I'm going to show you how to do that next. All right, when we're talking about installing with L brackets or um, installing directly into the wall, you really need to either find a stud using a stud finder, or if you don't have one, you're going to have to use some kind of wall anchor. If you find that where you need to install your shade, there's no studs available, um, and sometimes I'll check that either with a stud finder or pre-drilling a little hole in the wall to see if I hit a stud. Um, these particular kind of wall anchors work really well on Roman shade brackets. So this is just plain drywall. It's not going to hold my shade up. So I'm going to use a wall anchor. These are really easy to install. You just have a starter hole and drill it till it's flush with your wall. Okay, I have both of my wall anchors in place. 
Also, when I made these marks, I made sure that they were horizontally level. Do that with an actual level. Don't do it just for measuring from your ceiling or your floor. Um, but go ahead and make sure that these are level. And then all you have to do is put, start by putting your L bracket on the wall. Super easy. When you are actually measuring for where these brackets go, not only do you want to consider where your studs are, but the other thing you want to think about is where your screw eyes are. It's important that these brackets obviously are not in a location where it's going to hit a screw eye. Um, so think about that before you place your brackets. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get two little small screws and you want screws that when they go up into the board are not going to poke out the top. So this little board is three quarters of an inch thick, so I'm gonna use little three quarter inch screws. And then what I do is I will balance my screw on top of my drill like that. And I'll either set that down or have a helper hold it for a second. And then what you'll do is you put your shade up on top here and let me show you something. Lift that up out of the way. So this is where you want to make sure that none of these strings are caught like this between the bracket and the shade board. And then you just center it, hold it in place. And these boards are really soft, these um, pine boards. So I will just push down on the board and drill right up into it. Once you've got one screw in there, it's not going to go anywhere. I even did that with my left hand. That's how easy it is. Move that out of the way. That's all there is to mounting a shade on L brackets. And there you go. Perfectly mounted Roman shade. That's all there is to L brackets. Simple. Well, I hope that video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or if something was confusing, just please leave your question or your comment um, below and I will try my best to answer it for you. I know that this will give you the confidence to measure correctly and install your own shade. And I wish you the best. Happy sewing. Thanks for watching.